hallelujah we serve a powerful god we serve an omnipotent god we serve an omnipresent god we serve a god that is here there and everywhere hallelujah he's a mighty god can i get a co-signer hallelujah to jesus hallelujah hallelujah we come to bless him we come to praise him we come to magnify him we come to exalt him we come to bless him he is awesome and worthy to be praised come on can you clap your hands one more time with me hallelujah glory to god This one of them old church songs. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bound before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty Oh, yes, he is. 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 Oh, yes, he is.
yes, he is. Oh, 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 yes, Co-sign it with me that we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They used to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Anybody grateful for being saved today? Hallelujah. I thank God for making ways out of no way. Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, he's a mighty God. Come on, clap your hands one more time and give him praise. Hallelujah to Jesus. Ooh, God, I thank you.
us. Hallelujah, our God is with us. Somebody high five your neighbor and say, our God is with us. Glory to God. Come on, turn to another neighbor and say, our God is with us. Yes, he is. Yes, Jesus is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, I guess he is. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So grateful that you're with us. Can I get you to slip your hands up? Come on. Can y'all worship with us? Can y'all help us worship him? Hallelujah. Come on, say something to him. He's a talking God. And he responds to your voice. Come on, tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you adore him. Come on, tell him how much you appreciate him. Come on, tell him he's a way maker. Way maker. Miracle work. Promise keep. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Ooh, come on, somebody wave at him. I feel the glory. Come on, say, way maker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. Hey. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. 
The presence of the Lord, hallelujah, is in this place. And if you don't get what you need today, hallelujah, if you came in here because you needed something, because you have some expectation of God, he's here right now. 
He's here right now. He's here right now. Hallelujah. He's here in this place. Don't you leave here. Hallelujah, God. Don't you leave here the same way you came in. Hallelujah. Seize this moment in his presence. Seize this moment in his presence. He's moving. He wants to do something for you. He wants to do something to you. He wants to do something through you. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you would please stand on your feet as we go to the scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God's got a plan for you. Say, God's got a plan for me. God's got a plan for me. And God's got a plan for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you this morning in this place. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah is resting in this place. And so to you, you, and you, on behalf of our illustrious pastor, Kevin T. Hart Sr., and our First Lady, Darlene Hart, and the Christian Tabernacle Church, we welcome you in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are there any first-time visitors here? We don't want to miss you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We welcome you, my sister. Hallelujah. And we believe that this won't be your first nor your last, that we will see you again. And so please greet our visitor, welcome her, and greet those around you who you have not had an opportunity to speak to this morning. At the conclusion, our young people can please move to the back so that we can go into youth church. Our young people should move to the rear of the church so that we can go next door. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to Christian Tabernacle, where our mission is to engage, equip, and empower the world to become explosive disciples. Is this your first time at Christian Tabernacle? If so, we're glad to have you with us. Here at Christian Tabernacle, we're focusing on the critical seeds, connect, contribute, and celebrate. We've designed today's service with you in mind. 
In just a few moments, we'll sing a few songs and then we'll hear a life-changing word. If you would like to get to know us a little better, please fill out the visitor information portion of the welcome packet and drop it in the offering bucket. Or give it to one of our Love First technicians. Again, thank you for coming today. We hope that you enjoy your time here. Oh, and by the way, here's what's happening at the tag. Hey, 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 Facebook family, Periscope family, Snapchat family, Instagram family, World Wide Web family. Listen, this is Pastor Kevin, just checking in with you two to invite all my men, all my brothers, all my uncles, all my nephews, all my fathers, all of my men out to the Situation Room Thursday for another night of discovering, discussing, and developing strategies to deal with the situations that men deal with daily. Listen, if you need more information, you can go to our Facebook page, you can go to our website, you can call the church at 202-265-9040, ask Speak Deacon Butler, and he can get you hooked up for the Situation Room. Connect with the tab on Sunday, February the 18th, at 3.30 p.m. for Shepherd's Day. Join the tab as we honor our shepherd, Pastor Kevin. Dinner will be served after morning service, so plan to stay and eat with us at the tab. The new members brunch will happen on Saturday, February the 10th at 10 a.m. All new members are asked to contact Sister Jaquita Fleming to confirm your presence for the new members brunch. The Love First Ministry will be selling Valentine's Day baskets as a fundraiser to help fund our Love First Appreciation Day. Baskets will range anywhere from $2 to $30. Please see Sister Faye for more details and to place your order. Are you interested in being baptized? Baptismals will be on fourth Sundays. You will receive a t-shirt and a special class at 1030 the morning of to share further info on the decision you have made concerning being baptized. Please remember that the Tabs Transportation Ministry is available to serve you. If you desire to be picked up, please call the church office each week by Wednesday at noon. If you want to stay up to date and connected with us, give us a like on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on YouTube, or tell those who missed out about our frequently updated live feed. This concludes our weekly announcements. We thank you again for coming to see us. We pray that you have a great week and remember, Tab family, we are touching to transform. to seep in on the inside because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me I don't care what the forecast is on the outside I get joy when I think about what he's done for me I get joy when I think about how he set me free come on, come on amen amen Come on, we gotta stop being, we gotta stop being thermometers and become thermostats where we control our own temperature. Amen. Some folk got up this morning and it wasn't a it wasn't not one precipitation on the ground, but because of what we heard. <laughs> I tell you. I tell you, but because of what we heard, we already called out for worship. Watch this. I ain't say you called out for church. I said, you called out for worship based upon what you heard. That's why you got to be careful about what you allow, what you're hearing, because what you're hearing will cause you to call out for worship. Now, you, uh, you'll get that. But, but I, I'm just so excited to see you all today. I'm just so, matter of fact, I'm just, I've been waiting to see y'all all week. And I mean that. I tell you, I, I mean, I just get, when I think about just, just this body of believers here and how, God has just been raising us up and God has been blessing us. I just get excited because I still know that I still have not seen. Neither have ears heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man what God has in store 
for us on the corner of 11th and Bishop William F. Hart Jr. Way. Amen, amen, amen. We going, we going through a reaccreditation at our Child Development Center. Amen. We, uh, we have started to get some, some plans, got architects doing some drawings, man. I'm telling you, things are getting ready to, to, to manifest themselves. Amen. Right here on the corner. Amen. So we thank God for that. Listen, I, I, uh, we do have a, a, um, uh, a few things that we want to do. Um, those youth that are just coming in, the bus is running a little late this morning. Had somebody to block the bus in, you know, I, you know. So we, but the buses, they, people are still coming in. Thank you, thank our transportation ministry for being flexible. Being flex we, we thank Minister uh, uh, Maria Jenkins for coming and hanging out with us on today. Amen. And all, as always, Theo, and uh, we thank you all so much. Listen, I want to thank all of those that pressed their way out on Wednesday night in support of, as I, we ministered over at Bethel Church for Pastor Jerome Holmes and co-pastor uh, Katina Holmes. We thank God we really had an awesome time on, on, the, on, on Wednesday night. Amen. Just keep all of these announcements in mind. We do have some, we, we, we do have some stuff in the works. We're planning our first um, Christian Tab reunion. Amen. 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 It's going to be on the first Sunday. It's going to be a part of our church anniversary, which is the first Sunday in June. We have tagged it Throwback Sunday. Amen. We're going to have the reunion choir. We're going to have uh, the ushers. We're going to be bringing some people in. And we're going to have a great, great time. Amen. Amen. We want to, we want to be able to put on display what God has done right beside what God is doing. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We want to we wanna celebrate for what he has done. But God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So he is still doing great things uh, with this ministry here. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we want to, we do want to pause for a second because we do have a few members of, uh, a few new members um, that we want to give the right hand of fellowship. Amen. Before we move any further. Uh, we gave last month, I think we gave close to 10. This month, what do we, come on, Brother Darrell, bring them. Um, have those that have completed their new members' classes um, within the month of January. We want to, amen, amen. Let's, let's come down, amen. First lady, you want to come and stand beside me? Amen, amen, amen. Super Bowl this evening, amen. I'll tell y'all something, let me, let me, you know, you know, my father, my father always rooted for the team that had the black quarterback. Oh, God, they from God. He, he, now, the next thing, if both had black quarterbacks, he would go with the one that, that, that was saved. So my father, he would always root for the one. And then if you said after, after the game, if you said, first of all, I give an honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, my God, my father speaking tongue. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when, uh, <laughs> now, and, and so it became difficult. I saw a couple of my friend pastors on Twitter after um, Nick Foles um, told his testimony and how when he retired, he wanted to become a pastor. And all of my pastor friends said, oh, man, we got to root for Philadelphia this evening. And so I told them, Bill Belichick said he's going to go to church next week. <laughs> So I'm rooting for Bill Belichick. I'm a New England fan, so I got to find a reason to root. Bill Belichick said he think he need to go back to church. See, that's all he is. He started in your mind. So let's go, let's go Patriots this evening. Amen. Amen. Um, first person we want to call up is, um, first let me read the certificate. This certificate of membership uh, presented by Christian Tabernacle Church of God Incorporated Christ Church Community certifies that on February 4th, 2018, Tanya Thornton, amen, has completed her First Touch New Members Training course and now has full rights and benefits awarded by the Christian Tabernacle of the Church of God, praising God and having favor with all people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Welcome. Amen. 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 You can stand right here. We're going we're gonna, to uh, we're gonna take a photo up, you know. This also says our second certificate is for Brother Anthony Goodwin. Come on, Doc. 
Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, we had more, more people to join, but they finished their classes. Amen. We thank, amen. Congratulations, buddy. Welcome, 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 welcome. Come on. Amen. We want to just uh, encourage you all to, to take the time out and, and, um, and if those of you that have joined that haven't completed your classes, Deacon Butler is holding classes. Amen. Every sa on Saturday mornings, amen. So you can come, you can get set up for your class and um, get you right on here, here, get you operating in what God has called you and sent you here for, amen. Amen. Congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. We're not going to keep you long today. We want to, uh, it's offering time. Come on. Oh man, it's offering time. Amen. We do, while we're taking the offer, I do want to, for those of you all, some of you may not know or remember um, Elder Evangelist Martha Davis um, on, uh, I believe it was Thursday, Martha Davis, um, she went from, she gained, she gained her wings and God has uh, taken her home and um, we want to continue to keep the family in prayer. Um, Thais Davis and Bishop Davis, um, she was living in Charlotte when she passed. Um, but the services will be held um, uh, tentatively next Monday, uh, February the 12th. They'll be held at Reed Temple in Glendale. Amen? Reed Temple in Glendale. So we want those, we're going to make sure that we um, represent. Uh, she's a former member here. Amen? She's affectionately known as Aunt Martha. Amen? Amen. So we want to um, we want to make sure that we are there for the family during this time. Amen. If you need an envelope, our love first technicians can serve you. Just slip your hand up, and our, our love first techs will serve you. Amen. Amen. And then we have a declaration that we do here uh, on, uh, as we prepare to give. We believe that it's more blessed to give to, uh, than it is received. We believe that we give because we understand that God giveth us. Amen. And that when we believe that we are striving, we are striving for a uh, uh, hundred percent tithing church. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is the goal. That is what God has called. And so we want to, we are striving. And, and, and as, 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 a, as a way of example, our church tithes out to, other, to another church as well. Amen. So we, we don't just ask you to give so we can uh, um, buy Maseratis and all of that stuff. No. Amen. We believe in the sowing and we believe in giving. We believe that our goal, our God has called us to be servants. Amen. And not just with our lips, but with our treasures. Amen. Amen. So when you have your, um, your offering, just everyone stand all over the place. Amen. All over the building. We're going to get you out of here this morning. Man, I, uh, my body was challenged this week, a uh, few days, man. But I guess he was just making me to lie down in green pastures. I, I felt so bad one day, Brother Willie, I, I asked myself, why did I even leave the house? I got all the way to the office and said, why did I even leave the house? And then my wife called me and I said, make it for me to lie down in green pastures. So I went home, amen, and when I went home and I stayed there for a few days, but God is good all the time. Amen. Give me strength. Amen. Listen, our declaration, if you're ready, we want to, um, our declaration. Amen. Amen. Let's read together. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, there is meat in my house. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word. He opens up the windows of heaven. He pours out blessings upon me that there is not room enough for me to receive them. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, he rebukes the devourer for my sake. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, all the people of the world call me blessed. I am blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am not in poverty, I am in prosperity. I'm not in lack, I'm in abundance. My abundance is a supply to those who are in lack. 
I have more than enough. All my needs are met. All my bills are paid. I owe no man anything but to love him. Jesus has come to give me this kind of life that I might have it more abundantly. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I prosper in everything that I do. In Jesus' name, amen. I love for a technician going to lead you out from the rear. Amen. God bless you. Just want to pray for Kevin Hart for allowing me to come and share with you all today. Um, it's actually not my, it's my first time worshiping here today, but it's not my first time being here. I used to sing with You for Christ Fellowship Mass Choir, and we used to do a lot of stuff up in here. So when I drove up the street, I was like, I've been here before. <laughs> so God bless you, and God bless you, First Lady. You deserve it. You deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, yes, it does. My hallelujah belongs to you, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it.
y'all sing it with us. My holly, my hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, lift it up. Come on and say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, say, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, let's go. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 5. The book of Mark, chapter 5. Those of you that know me know that I like to revisit regularly preached texts, texts that are familiar. Because I believe that the Bible is a living word. And I believe that you can look at the text 10 times and God will show you 10 different things in the same text. But I want to go to a familiar passage this morning because I think there are some people in here who need a miracle. I, 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 you know how I, I was listening to a prophet. Uh, I, I had my TV on and sometimes if you don't turn your TV on before you go to bed, you're hearing stuff that you don't really need to hear. And, and the prophet was saying, uh, uh, he was prophesying the woman sent him a seed and he said, I hear uh, 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 there's a man, there's a man. I don't know if it's your son, your father, your husband, your uncle, or your nephew. One of them got to be right. <laughs> God ain't tell you which one it was. <laughs> you know, and, and so, 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 but I don't, I'm not trying to be like the prophet in here, but I believe that there's somebody in here that needs a miracle. I don't even have to call, I don't even have to, I don't even need you to send me a seed to tell you that. Because all of us at times in our lives, all of us are dealing with stuff that needs supernatural intervention. We've tried it the best way we can do it. We've done all that we can do. We've depleted our resources and now we need God. I don't know, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I need God, I need God, I need God. I need God. I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't need a new Twitter follower. I don't need a new Facebook friend. I need God. I need God. In this season, when we're dealing with, when we got a number 45 and we got all of this, we need God. We don't, we don't need a lifeline. We need God in our lives. We need God to show up and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Uh, Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse number 21. I'm going to be reading out the New Living Translation. You follow me with whichever translation you have. But it says, Jesus got into the boat again, went back to the other side of the lake, where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him, my little daughter is dying. He said, please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him and all of the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years of constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I could just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing all around you. How can you ask who touched me? 
but he kept on looking around to see who done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling because she knew what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And after he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. If we go back up, it says because she came, had heard about Jesus, she came behind him through the crowd and touched him. I just, for the moment in the time that is ours today, I just want to ask a question. Are you ready for your miracle? We already did a consensus, we already did a poll, and we already come to the conclusion that people in here need a miracle. Now, I want to know, are you ready for your miracle? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Hide me behind your cross today so that I might too marvel at your word on today. Give me revelation, knowledge, and clarity of speech. Let lives be changed. Let hearts be fixed. Let relationships be restored on today. Father, this is my prayer. God, I believe it lines up with your will. So I believe you have heard me. And because you have heard me, I know I have what I've asked of you. In Jesus' name. Just look at your name and tell your name, I'm ready for my miracle. I'm ready for my miracle. You may be seated. Now, when we talk about miracles, we talk about things that have become insurmountable and it needs an outside supernatural encounter. We need God to show up and do something that oh, we have tried to figure out all by ourselves. Uh, it, it, matter of fact, there's a quote. There's a quote I want to read. There's a quote that says, You can learn to go way beyond believing and goal setting to a new place within yourself, the place of knowing. It is in this realm of your mind that miracles are produced. This is by Wayne Dwyer. So when we look at this text, what we see in this text, we see that Jesus now, who he had just traveled and he is just arriving back, and upon his, uh, his, his arrival at the shore, uh, there's a, a leader of the synagogue named Jairus, and, and Jairus comes, and Jairus kneels at Jesus' feet, and he tells Jesus that my daughter is sick. My daughter is sick. My daughter is, is dealing with something that I can't do it. He says, I, I am a leader. I am a prominent person, but even my, my social uh, associations can't help me now. So I'm coming, and I'm not coming out of faith. I'm coming out of superstition because I am a devout Jew, and I don't really believe that you are the son of God. I'm, I'm approaching you. I'm not approaching you out of faith. I'm approaching you out of superstition. But Jesus now, what he does is he follows him anyway. He, he goes with him, and he's following him, and he's following him to his daughter. Now, you must understand. Now, you know Jesus is deliberate. Now, Jesus is very intentional about everything he does. He wastes nothing. He withholds nothing. Everything that he's done is done to provoke a conscience and an action. He's, he, he, he knows where he's going. You remember when Jesus, and they were going uh, to Jerusalem, and, uh, and he said, I must need go." To Samaria. Now, 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 Jesus now going through Samaria was going out of the way, the closest, the quickest way. And because the Jews did not have association with the Samaritans, so it was easier. It was a shorter way, and it caused them to not interact with people that they didn't fool with anyway. But there comes a time when Jesus is trying to do something, and Jesus is trying to, 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 to display the intent of God to the principalities and to the powers that Jesus will go out of his way to, to, just to prove his point. Jesus goes out of his way because he was being pulled by a need. Hey, that's what you must understand. Sometimes you don't understand why you do what you do. But when those that are led by the Spirit of God shall be called the sons of God. And nevertheless, when the Spirit of truth shall come, it shall lead you and guide you to a need. 
Oh, God, because we have been called to serve and we've been called to be the Christ in the earth. So sometimes God will take you out of your way so that you can get in the way. Okay, here it is in the text now, Jesus. Now, he goes, and as he goes, he, we, we, we pick up the story, and there's a woman that is dealing with an issue. Now, her issue is not just some little, oh, I can get over this. This is not the 24-hour flu. This is not, oh, I'll take two Tylenols and I'll be fine in the morning. This woman is dealing with the issue of bleeding, and her bleeding has been going on for 12 years. Now, now you, you, I, I know we go past that real quick, but if you think about it, you, for, for, for women in here that are dealing with bleeding issues, if your bleeding lasts more than seven days, it causes you to become alarmed. Now, now this woman has been dealing with this issue for 12 years, and, and when we, researchers have found, researchers say that if you bleed heavily for more than two weeks, and if it's extended, it could cause health issues, and it could even lead to death. Now, now this woman is dealing with something that statistics say could kill her. Now, now, how do they know that this could kill her? And what they've done is they've just done some statistics, and they've done some comps. And so what they've done is they've taken a, a, a group and a lump of, of statistics, and they've taken the average, and based upon the average, it says the average person should be dead. Okay, let me help y'all some of y'all. So this woman was dealing with something that would have killed the average person. Oh God, I need somebody in here to understand that you don't need to, you don't, you don't understand, but statistics prove some people have, the average person has died from what you're living through. Uh, you've been living longer than you should based upon statistics, but when God has a plan and a purpose for your life, you're not average, you're supernatural. You need to understand that God will calls you to outlive some stuff. That's what the word super bavari is. The word super bavari means super, means above and beyond. Bavari means liver. Uh, so, so some of us, the reason why we didn't die, it's not because of how good we are. It's not because of our money. It's not because of our honey. It's because we are super livers. We outlive some stuff. We live beyond some stuff. We live longer than the average person. There are some folk that, 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 that died from less than what we've been through, but because because God, oh God, we tell your lady, tell your neighbor, I'm a super liver. I don't live some stuff. There's some stuff that should have took me out a long time ago, but I've been dealing with it, and now I'm ready for my miracle. Oh God, I, I feel it here. I feel it. I feel it. Just slap five with somebody and tell them I've been dealing with this long enough. I need my miracle. I, I've been dealing with this in, for long enough. I need a breakthrough. I've been dealing with this long enough. I need to be delivered. Oh, now the only thing that about this is that she's dealing with something that's in a private place. Oh, she's dealing with an issue, and her issue is in a private place. Oh, God. And, and, and then the thing about it is, truth be told, some of us come to church, and we go through extensive uh, preparation to cover our private issues. Uh, here, she, she, she's got something. She's bleeding, but she's bleeding in private. Folk, she comes, and she, she looks, she acts like she's got it all together. She, she comes, and she serves like there's nothing wrong. She comes, and she gets on her post, and she does. She served because people don't know that she's a public success, but she's bleeding privately. Her, her marriage is, on, is bleeding. Her, her relationships are bleeding. Her, her mind is starting to bleed. And she's coming and she's covering up the fact that she's dealing with some private issues. She's dealing with a private issue. She's dealing with stuff. That, 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 that the average person would have died from, but she still gets up and she goes to work every day. She's dealing with stuff that would have caused the average person to throw in the towel, but she gets up and she, she comes and she serves others and she puts others before herself. She gets up and she continues to, 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 to be faithful over the few things. There's knowing that God has to make her ruler over many. She keeps showing up. Oh, God, because she's a survivor. Now you must understand that if you want to think that you must understand, but when she finally makes, gets the nerve to show up, Jesus is preoccupied 
with other people's problems. So, <laughs> he, he, he watched this. Jesus was going to Jairus' house. Now, my first thing, my first point that I want to give you, that if you are really, when you know that you're really ready for a miracle, is the first thing you must realize that your situation can't wait for an invitation. That's number one. Uh, some of us in here, we're waiting for somebody to come and invite us into his presence. Uh, but the mere fact that you can see him means that he's here right now. Okay, so some of us are waiting for the right time. We're waiting for the right folk. We're waiting for the right visit before we tell, before we fall at his feet. But when your situation has come to the point where you are, you, it could have killed you, your situation can't wait for an invitation. This woman, now she shows up. She doesn't ask permission. You know somebody else that showed up didn't ask permission. You remember when Mary, she came into the room and she broke open the alabaster jar. She didn't ask nobody because her situation couldn't wait for an invitation. And I come to tell some of your sister Sylvia Bailey, evangelist Sylvia Bailey used to say this all the time, the altar is always open, okay? I know y'all wait until I get finished preaching, until the music plays softly behind me, until I make the offer, make the invitation, but I come to tell you, as soon as you recognize his presence and you realize your situation can't wait for an invitation, the altar is always open. Now, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, this thing has been going on long enough and I ain't got time to see if people think I'm worthy to be invited to his presence. Because when I think about the goodness of your God, I need you to high five somebody and say, I can't wait for an invitation because the average person done died from this. Oh God, let me, let me, let me, let me move, let me move through this text. Okay, okay, so you must understand that you, you understand that she should have been dead Based upon research, based upon research, she should be dead because uh, the comps say that the average person would have died by now. So the mere fact that you're not dead yet means that God must have a miracle in store for you. Okay, so she realized she's bleeding. She's bleeding in private. And so what happens is she realized if you're ready for your miracle, you must understand, you must realize that your situation can't wait for an invitation. Secondly, how do you know you're ready for a miracle? It's because you have to raise your own expectations. <laughs> I know you're ready for a miracle when you raise your own expectations. It's right here in the text. It says, verse 28, it says, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe. I would be healed. Now, watch this. She thought to her own self. Watch this. And things might be things you need to understand. Not only should she have been dead by now, but by now because of the continual bleeding, she could become anemic and she could be weak. And all of her life, every area of her life could be affected by what she's been dealing with. But based upon this script, this, this verse, it lets me know that no matter whatever else she's dealing with, she's dealing with public scorn. She's dealing with people who know what she's dealing with, turning their nose up with her because you couldn't even come out out in public and be bleeding. If you sat on the chair, they had to burn the chair. So she's dealing with all of this stuff. But the biggest thing that I realized is that she still got her mind. Okay. Now I need you to understand this, that when you understand that no matter how long you've been dealing with it, you need to do a mind check to make sure I'm still in my right mind. My daddy, my daddy, can I talk about my daddy real quick? My daddy, he would be sitting in his chair. He couldn't walk no more. My daddy, he couldn't get up and do things on his own. But the way that my father would appreciate God of his salvation is he'd start calling out numbers. Uh, and that lets you know that he still was in his right mind. He'd say, Kevin, number is 301-395-5555. Now, i give you my number. He would say, Kim, number is 202-215-1353. He would say, Mike's number is 772-3720. He would just, th Lerl, number is 202-345-1344. And, and all of this time, he couldn't get up on his own. All of this time, he dealing with issues that would have took the average person out. But as long as he was in his right mind, good God Almighty, he knew that everything, good God Almighty, was going to be all right. Huh? You need to do a mind check. You need to start rehearsing some stuff that you remember to let you know that all the hell that I've been through, I'm still in my right mind. Huh? And if I'm in my right mind, I can get my miracle. 
Oh God, oh God. Uh, oh God, I can get my miracle. I can get my miracle because I'm in my right mind. I can think my way out of this. Okay, let me show you why she thought to herself. Can I pause here parenthetically to tell you how she thought to herself? The Bible says that she heard and she thought. Okay, okay. Oh. It says that she didn't think until she heard about Jesus. Okay, here it is. Here it is because the Bible says uh, that faith comes by hearing. Okay, so when she heard, based upon what she heard, it developed her faith. And her faith caused her to think. Okay, okay. So the only way that you can raise your expectation is that you have to have faith. And your faith about what you can think is developed by what you are listening to. Okay. So, so, so maybe the reason why you can't think your way out of it is because you're not listening to the right stuff. Because if you're listening to the right stuff, it develops your faith. And then you are able to think uh, more high, you'll be able to think better than what you've been thinking. That's why it says, Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all, you are able to uh, ask or think. Okay, here it is. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let be ye transformed by the renewing of your own mind. So based upon what she heard, what she heard helped her develop her faith and her faith provoked her to think that she could have a miracle. Oh God, I know why some of us have given up and some of us have thrown in the towel. It's because we listen to stuff that don't cause us to develop our faith and we don't think we can. Listen, the secular world has has mastered the principle of the mind. All you got to do is think about R. Kelly. R. Kelly said, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Why? Because I think about it every night and day. Why? Then I spread my wings and I fly away. Okay, that wasn't good enough for you. Let me get the great philosopher from the West Coast. You might know him as Calvin Brodus. I know him as Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, back in the day, he had a song called Gin and Juice. He said, my mind on my money <laughs> and my money on my mind. Okay, and if we as believers can take the same principles but make it spiritual, he says, I got my mind on my miracle <laughs> and my miracles on my mind. Okay, I need you to look at somebody and tell somebody, I need to get some, some secular principles to be able to bring it to here and say, I got my mind on my miracle. And I'm my miracle on my mind. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. I got my mind on my miracle. And my miracle on my mind. And I thought I could get out of this. Okay, okay, hold on, let me pause here because I got to go. So the first thing you must understand that if you're ready for a miracle, is you got to realize that your situation can't wait for an invitation because people might not think you're worthy for a miracle, okay? And if you wait for somebody to invite you into the place of miracles, you'll be waiting a long time. Secondly, if you know you're ready for a miracle, is you have to raise your expectation, okay? The third thing that you must do is because a lot of people have expectation, but they don't have participation, okay? In the text, in the text, it says that when her expectations were raised, she thought to herself that if I could just get and touch his clothes, I will be healed. Now, 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 her expectation was required participation. Now, some of us are dying with expectation without out ever using, without ever seeing manifestation because we're missing a piece in the puzzle that means that you need to have participation in what you are expecting from God. Okay, it says when she heard, she thought. And based upon what she thought, it says she went out behind him. Okay, see, some of us have to learn how to move from where we thought, oh God, to get to what we need. Okay, some of us are still locked in our prayer closet, hoping that the prayer is going and the answer is going to come in the prayer closet. But I come to tell you what you believe and what you expect in your prayer closet, it's going to require you to get up off your knees and participate in what you expect. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, what are you doing about what you expect? What are you doing about the promise that God has over your life? Are you going to move from permission to possession or are you going to keep shouting over something you expect because you 
you won't participate in, and it manifests itself in your life. Okay, he, he, she, 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 didn't, she wasn't just okay about what she thought. She had to go grab what she thought and what she expected and bring it into her natural, into her, into her, her experience. See, see, some of us are not experiencing it. Some people are shouting over a picture of a thing. Too many of us, we, we, God shows us something and we, and we, we shout over what he shows us. Now, I'm not, trust me, I, I believe that we have to pause and shout. I believe that there is a responsibility to every believer that in the moment that you grab hold of it in the spirit realm, it's time for you to move into a praise. Watch this. But your praise should not keep you from pursuing what's been shown. Okay, because sometimes you'll run around and, and always shouting over the picture of it. <laughs> and you'll never actually grab hold of the real thing. Huh? So this woman now, she's been dealing with an issue for 12 years. And, and God has given her a picture of deliverance based upon what she's heard. And now what she does is she has an expectation from God. And now what she does is she takes her expectation and she couples it with participation. And she goes out and she doesn't allow anybody around her to keep her from getting what she expects. Okay, I don't know who that's for, but some of us have some big dreams and some big vision and we have some expectation, but we're allowing people to keep us from getting to what we expect. We allow the crowd that don't think we're worthy. People, we remind people, allow people to remind us of our past and makes us think our past has negated our promise. But I come to tell you today, if you will get up off of your behind and learn how to participate in what God is doing for you in this season, you shall have your miracle, okay? I need you to pause 30 seconds right here and find out what are the things that I need to do to participate with God in this season. What are some things I need to cut out of my life that's keeping me from participating in my miracle? Who are some of the people that I need to delete, delete, delete to keep that's keeping me from participating and partnering with God? Okay, here it is. We, all, we, we, we almost done. So we got expectation plus participation. Now, now you must understand. Now, the next thing that we must understand is that the woman came out, and the Bible says that she touched him. Then when you get to the end of the verse, when Jesus asked, who touched me? Uh, the Jesus said, who touched, who touched me? And the people said, all of these people around you, how are we to know who touched you? Everybody is touching you. He said, no, there was something different about this touch. I'm not going to allow you to cause me to minimize the magnitude of this miracle. Who touched me? And when the woman was in fear, watch this. The scripture says, because she knew. What had happened to her? Now, this is good right here. This is good right here. The woman knew what had happened to her. Watch this. So my, my, my next point is, how do you know you're ready for a miracle when investigation is not a prerequisite of confirmation? Okay, let me, let me, okay, let me help y'all. How do you know when you're ready for your miracle is when investigation is not a prerequisite for confirmation? Watch this. Because she says she knew. Now, we already came and we already understood that her issue was in a private place. But she knew. See, sometimes you got to break out in a praise before you can peek, okay? <laughs> because sometimes it's not publicly appropriate to peek in private places. So all she was basing what she knew was based upon what she felt. Okay, here it is right here. We get there, get out of here. But the Bible says she felt like she was healed. Huh? And I don't know who's in here today, but some of y'all feel like God has done something in your life. But you won't give them praise because you got to go investigate. But God says, blessed, blessed are you because you you seen and you believe. He says, but blessed are those who have not seen and believe. And I come to tell somebody in here today that if you can know based upon what you feel, I don't know. I, he said something this guy, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like I've been changed. I don't need to go home and check about it because something just told me that everything going to be all right. How do you know everything going to be all right? Because the Holy Ghost, it just told me that everything is going to be all right. I need about 30 people in 
here that can feel like God is working it out. It feels like their marriage is turning around. That feels like their life is on the come up. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. I know because I feel. I feel like everything is going to be all right. I don't have to wait till the battle is over. I can shout right now because I feel that my miracle has already happened. I don't have to wait till the music queue up. I can shout right now because I feel like something happened to me. Slap by somebody and say, you keep waiting till you get home. But if you praise them right now, oh, praise them because you feel it. Praise them because you just know, not based upon what you see, but based upon what you feel. I felt like something happened. I felt like I got my breakthrough. I felt that my marriage is turned around. I felt that my life is better. I felt that my hell is better. I felt like it. Let your neighbor say, I feel all right. I know, based upon what I feel, I know it don't look like it on the outside. But based upon what's going on on the inside, I know everything is going to be all right. That's why my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but only live on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground you seek and say, slap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm ready for my miracle. I'm ready for my struggle to end. I'm ready for my breakthrough. I'm ready. Lord have mercy. Yeah. I got to go. I got to get out of here. I got to go. But I need you to understand. I got one more point. Now when the woman came because she knew, the text said that Jesus told her, because of your faith, he didn't say that it was in remission. Okay, you're missing, you're missing the text. The text says that because of your faith, he didn't say, I need to check up every six months. He didn't say, call me if it come back again. But what he said in the text, he says, he told her, he says, your struggle is over. <laughs> okay, that went over your head, okay. He says, because of your faith, the enemy that you see today, <laughs> you ain't going to see no more. So stop telling me it still hurt right there. Because the struggle is over. <laughs> and I come to tell somebody, my last point is, that you're going to have to receive consummation based upon your anticipation. That's why when those years, or you got to come to him, those that come to him must first believe that he is. <laughs> And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. That's the anticipation. Watch this. But when you come in faith like that, he gives you consummation. And he says, based upon your faith, your struggle is over. Goodbye, we got the communion to go. But I come to tell you, not only do you feel it, it's the real thing, baby. Your struggle is over. You don't have to cry no more because your struggle is over. You don't have to stay up sleepless nights no more because the struggle is over. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I want to shout with you right now because your struggle is over. Matter of fact, I need you to get out of your cold mindset and I need you to come out from where you're sitting and I need you to go to five people and prophesy into their lives and tell them your struggle is over, your struggle is over. 
Your breakthrough is here. Your miracle is happening. Your deliverance is happening. Your fire is being stored. Come out from where you are and testify to somebody and tell them your struggle is over. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, we've been made in those or night, but joy coming in the morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, your struggle is over. Look at another neighbor and tell another neighbor, neighbor, oh, neighbor, your struggle is over. Weeping may endure for a night, but today I'm ready for my struggle to be over. Lord, have mercy. And when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, I don't have to wait till the battle is over. Get it out. I gotta pray. Listen, you need to understand it's not good enough to just want a miracle. You have to be prepared to expect and participate with God in the miracle process. Listen, we're done. But I tell you. I'm tired of hearing testimonies about people leaving here with a to-do list and never moving from expectation to manifestation because there is no participation. I know we are told, a lot of us believe that he's just magic man in the sky, but he is the Christ in you the hope of glory. Why are you waiting for an invitation to a party in your house? Let me say that again. Why are you waiting for an invitation to a party that's being held in your house? Christ is in you. The hope of glory. And the, I told you last week that when he ripped the veil, the only veil that remains, that keeps you from his presence, is the veil in you. You are your own veil, keeping you from experiencing your miracle. This woman had a private issue, but because she had prepared her mind for her miracle, she had her mind on a miracle, and her miracle on her mind. She didn't allow nobody to keep her out of his presence. Some people say she crawled some people said she got down and she drug herself. I don't care how she had to do it. She did it. And that's for you. I don't care what you got to do to get in this presence. Some of us got to rearrange some stuff in our lives to get in his presence. This master life we're going through is causing people to rearrange and reprioritize their life because the number one priority should be getting into his presence. But the first thing, do you want to get into his presence? Because you think you can be made whole. Or is your circle a circle of dream killers? That every time you start to think you can, they remind you that you can. If the people or the things you're listening to 
are not developing your faith, it is disturbing your mind. Ha, let me say that again. If what you are listening to is not developing faith, it is diminishing mind. Because your mind responds to your faith. Okay, let me see. Your mind gets its indicators from what you believe. If you don't believe you can be free, you won't ever think about being free. I think it was Harriet Tubman said, I could have freed a whole bunch more people if they've only known that they were slaves. How many of us don't even realize that we in bondage? You need to start feeding yourself with words of faith so that you can start thinking of strategies. I'm broke because my mama was broke. My mama's mama was broke. My mama's mama mama was broke. Man, you need to go back and rip that genealogy out of your history book and start it fresh. When they start telling me, I don't even know much about my past. I think my only family that I know on the heart side is me, Kim, Billy. Because when you go past that and you start talking about the dysfunction, I rip it out. I don't need it. When you start talking about my aunt didn't talk to my uncle and my, and my sister didn't talk to this, I rip it out. I only remember what feeds me and develops my faith. I'm telling you, you better be careful about wanting to research your history because you're going to find some stuff that diminishes what you can think. I come to tell you today, if you are ready for your miracle, because this story was not about the woman with the issue of blood. She made it about her. So many times, we sit back and we watch God going in and out of people's houses. We watch people. I used to sit back and watch the parties next door in Miss Spencer's house. And he's like, dang. How long are you going to sit back and watch him in your neighborhood? Waiting on an invitation and knowing he has what you need. We have to understand, you have to make this story about you. And that's what I want to say today, that, that, that this, that you, some of us have come here, some of us, Jesus is moving, and some of us sitting here today, I encourage you to make this story about you. Now is the time of salvation. You don't have to wait. Your situation can't wait for an invitation. So I told you that the altar is already open, but if you're here today, our, our decision texts are coming. If you're here today, and you got issues. Well, that's, I don't mean all y'all. I don't need everybody coming. That's it. <laughs> because we all got issues. <laughs> but if everybody, if, if you got issues today, and the average person would have been dead by now, if they were dealing with the same thing you were dealing with, it means that God has a miracle for you. If you're here today and, 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 and and you're seeing this book and you're seeing God blessing everybody. God's on his way to Jairus' house. God's on his way to Kim's house. God's on his way. And you're sitting back waiting for somebody to invite you on the trip. God, God told me, okay, you don't even have to wait. He says, now is the time. You need to come. You need to come. You need to come. Now is the time. I don't know who you are. Everyone's standing. Everyone's standing. Because we're not going to go here. Some of us, and, and guess what? Some of us have covered up our private issues, our private bleeding to come here today. Man, we know we bleed, and we don't, and we, we're not going to take it off until we get back home. But God told me to tell you, you're in a safe place. You're in a safe place, but you got to touch him. He didn't touch her. She touched him. Too many people are sitting back waiting for God to touch them. God is saying, no, you touch me, and you shall be made well. If you're here today, if you're here today and you need, a, you need a touch from God, you need a miracle in your life, God is telling me you need to come out. You need to press. You need to come out. You need to step out. If you got to step over somebody, you need to step over somebody. You need to come right now. I'm telling you, now is the time to touch him. 
So everybody looking for a touch for somebody else. Some of us are sending money all overseas to get somebody to send us a blessed cloth. But God says, it's not about me touching you. It's about you touching me. He said, because I'm touched by your faith. And I'm touched by your press. Come, 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 come. I need you to come right now. I'm not going to move from this spot because I need there's some of us that we are still covering up some issues. God is saying, you need to come. You need to come right now. You need to come. You need to come. You need to come. You need to come and come. I know, we, I know, I know the Super Bowl don't come on at 6.30, but I'm telling you, you're going to score the first points in the Super Bowl today. You're going to get the first points in Super Sunday. This is your Super Sunday. This is your Super Sunday. You need to come out from where you are. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come touch him. 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 Come touch him, come touch him. Come on, come touch him, come touch him. Stop waiting for the person next to you to come. You come, you be the first, you be the trendsetter. You be the trendsetter, you pave out the way. You make it easy for the person next to you. If you're ready for your miracle, come. Matter of fact, some of us are here and, and we don't see it as our miracle. We see it as somebody we love miracle. We're praying for their miracle. I'm telling you to come out for their miracle right now. Come on, you've been praying for somebody for a long time, but God told me by faith, you, it, the struggle will be over for them if you can step out, step out, step out, step out. Come on, step out, step out, step out, step out, step out. Come on, step out, step out by faith, step out by faith. Come on, step out, come on. Every, I need everybody in prayer, in prayer, in prayer. This is not a sightseeing show. This is a show. This is when we are believing people, you will get it today. By the time you leave here today, the struggle is over. If you out there watching us on live stream, stop what you're doing. Put the popcorn down and clear your heart and say, God, I'm ready for my struggle to be over. The struggle is over. The struggle is over. Because I decree and declare today that the struggle is over. I decree and declare that you didn't come out. That you didn't come out for not. God is meeting you. God is seeing your faith, and God is touching you. You are touching Him, and He is turning around, and He's touching you. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Ha! Hallelujah. 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 I feel God here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, grab hands, grab hands with each other. Grab hands, grab hands, grab hands, grab hands, grab hands, grab hands. Father, we thank you today, God. Father, we've been dealing with issues, God. Issues that the average person would have been dead by now. But thank God we're not average. We are peculiar people. You are a holy nation. We're your special treasures, God. So, Father, as we pray for those that have come to this altar on this morning, God. Father, we pray, God, that they came saying, I'm ready for my miracle. I'm ready for my breakthrough. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with these private bleeding issues. I'm tired of bleeding, dealing with issues that I got to cover up and I got to disguise and I got to make it look like everything's all right. He said, but I'm telling you that today, God, they're coming. And God, today, I declare that you're going to give them joy for ashes. You're going to give them, you're going to give them, God, you're going to restore to them, God, the years that the canker worms, the pomegranates, and the caterpillars ate up in their lives, God. God, restore relationships today, God. God, restore family, God. Restore family, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Father, we shake, Luke, anything, God, that's keeping us from being able to think we can, God. Father, we got our mind on our miracles, God, and our miracles on our minds, God. Father, we pray, God, that you meet them at their desires, God. Father, we pray, God, that they do not grow weary in well-doing, God. Father, for those that don't know you today, God, God, make the opportunity. Let them, God, find you on today, God, because you are a rewarder to them that diligently seek you, God. Father, we praise you, God. Father, we're going to praise you, God. We don't have to go home to check on it, God, but as we release these hands that we are holding, God, we release these hands and we praise even before we peek. We praise even before we go investigate. We praise even before we go and make a phone call because investigation is not a prerequisite to confirmation. Come on, give God some praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now go back and go back like you know you got it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Anything. 
anything. As we prepare, I love First Technics. I don't know if any came, anyone was in this call that accepted Jesus Christ. If you were here and you accepted and you wanted to accept Jesus Christ, I love First Technics. Our decision texts are here to help you with that. Also, we're getting ready to go into communion. I'm going to ask our deacons to come at this time. But also what I want is that for, for our first-time visitors or those visitors that are here, we do have a VIP reception set up for all of our visitors. Immediately following communion, our Love First technician will show you, just take your things immediately following communion, and they're going to show you to the VIP reception. Amen. Amen. Our deacon's going to come. We're going to make way for communion. We ask that everyone would just prepare your hearts and your mind as we enter to this most sacred moment. Amen. We worship you, our Lord. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. from the rear as the music continues. I love for a tech is going to lead you out from the rear.